Hello and welcome back to Rue's Life. I'm here in the shed and I've got a few bits and pieces that I want to be doing today. It feels decidedly autumnal and to be honest with you it's been a welcome and refreshing change from the intense hot baking days that we have been having. Now don't get me wrong it's been absolutely lovely to have some dry weather um, and as I've mentioned previously I'm very fortunate that we're on a borehole here on the farm so I can water the plot to my heart's content. Um, I have no concerns about restrictions with water because we've got our own supply. And there have been some advantages to it being um, hot and dry. Some of my plants have thrived in the, the warmth, like the watermelons. Other things like the um, climbing beans have not done so well. But it feels really strange. I think it's the first day this year that I'm in a bobble hat and I'm actually in a waterproof. Um, it's been lashing with rain this morning. And of course, the positive of that is I don't have to water the outside beds, um, just the things that are in the polytunnel. And actually, at this time, in between this kind of season change, where we've been watering, 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 and polytunnels, you know, they, they just frantically need water in those very, very hot conditions. It's just being a little bit careful now that actually there are days like this when the poly will only really need watering once a day. Because when the weather is cooler, um, especially overnight, in the morning there's still a lot of moisture in that soil. So I need to be careful that I'm not overwatering. So my rule of thumb is basically put my hand in the soil. Um, you know, there's often a question asked, um, I see it so much on, you know, social media and forums and, and the like, you know, how much should I water? What's too much? What's too little? And without it meaning to sound in any way patronising, you know, just use a little bit of common sense. You know, don't get too um, hung up on it. Look at the plants, look at the soil. Um, you know, if the soil is absolutely bone dry, well, of course, it's going to need watering. But if you feel the soil and it, it's nice and moist, um, then you don't necessarily need to water as much. Um, and the other tip is, particularly in, in polytunnel beds, I've found that if it's a bed that you've used a lot and, you, and you're using the no dig method, which I do, sometimes you can end up with a bed that's a little bit um, compacted and you're watering, but actually, if you dig down, it's still quite dry underneath. So sometimes during the months where I haven't got anything in a bed or just in between taking one crop out and putting another in, I might have a little fertile around or even just poke lots of holes um, and, and really give it a good drenching. And those of you that follow me may recall that um, at the beginning of this growing season, if you will, I mean, uh, traditionally we do have a growing season, but because I tend to grow in the polytunnel, I do grow all year round. But I do have some empty beds over the winter months. And then as we're approaching spring, I do start to really drench those beds and then just check by putting a trowel in and have all my hand even having a little look to see is that water penetrating through and have I got a good soak right the way down in those beds. So I'm waffling a little and going off piste. Um, in true Rue fashion, I have myself a list. Um, I've got quite a lot of things I want to get done, not necessarily all of them today. Um, I've still got my dry wipe um, board list, which I can't live without. Um, and I'm just going to have a little look because sometimes I will do the jobs and forget to tick them off. So let's have a little look on the dry white lists. Um, so on this, um, I'm going to hope that I'm going to tick. Let's let's be optimistic. I've got a pen ready. Um, so it was to weed all of the beds. Um, I've done a little bit, but not enough that I can actually tick off and say, yes, I have weeded. Um, so I've kind of weeded. Um, <laughs> most unlike me, I'm usually very methodical. Um, and instead of weeding each bed, I've actually weeded the bits at one end of, of a couple of the beds. So I do need to get on top and do a bit more um, of that. So the flower bed I've weeded at one end, the squash bed I've weeded up one end and the brassica bed um, I have actually weeded 
quite well. I took out some of the stuff that was in the brassica bed and I did have a good old weed there. But there are other beds that, that really could do with me getting in and having a good rummage. But because the weather's not as great today as it could be and we've been having some heavy downpours, hence the waterproof, I think today I'm going to stick to working in the polytunnel. Um, I need to weed my path. So again, I've got the weed suppressant membrane and I have the bark chip, but you still get the occasional you know, weed seed that strays into the bark mulch and will start to grow. So I do keep on top of weeding those paths and they are due for a little weed. But again, that'll be for another day. Uh, the strawberry runners I've already ticked and you should have seen my previous video on how I um, take my strawberry runners and make my new plants and I will show those to you. They're still outside on the bench and they've all taken really well. So, you know, if for any of you that watched that video um, and you were concerned thinking, oh, you know, you've seen other videos or you've read or been told about, you know, the other techniques, uh, which are perfectly fine <laughs> and everybody can do things the way that they want to. Um, but for me, the whole thing of having a pot and pegging out the runners and waiting for it to root before you cut them off, to me, it's very time consuming. Um, I, as you've seen in that previous video, and I'll link it above, I make it much, much simpler. And I will show you those strawberries to show you just how well they've taken. So quick, simple, easy, and I've created a whole host of new strawberry plants. And I may even do some more before the end of this season. Um, I want to start sowing. I've got a few things to sow. Um, so I'm going to have a little seed sort. That's another great job to be doing on a rainy day. Um, and I'm going to start getting some more uh, seeds sown into trays and pots and possibly also some directly into the beds in the polytunnel. Um, I need some more weed suppressant membrane. Now, I have had a, a, a smaller roll, which I've bought. It's over in this corner. Um, I was going to show it to you, but by grabbing it, I think I'm just going to knock a whole load of things down. So uh, suffice to say that um, we've had another project on the go, which I will be sharing with you. And we needed some weed suppressant membrane for that. Um, so I have actually got some weed suppressant membrane. So I'm going to put a wee tick on that, but I'm going to put an extra box because I'm going to need more. We didn't buy a really long length. Um, I, I'm rambling now, but um, the stuff that I bought to do the bulk of these pathways, um, I bought a really, really long roll and it was good value. So I might go back um, to see if that supplier's still got that same offer on. Um, and I'm still trying to source some peppermint chard seeds, although lots of you um, have given me suggestions. I can't even remember where I asked now. It may have been here um, on YouTube, but it could have been on um, my Facebook page. It may even have been in another Facebook group. Um, can't remember, but thank you very much to all of you that made suggestions. I have um, now got a list of suppliers where I can get some um, peppermint chard seeds, um, so I need to get hold of those. Um, and that's what's on this list at the moment. Uh, this one, um, I can actually cross one off because it was it was getting hold of some pallets because I was going to make some more pallet compost um, heaps, but I actually splashed out and bought those lovely um ones that I had from, um, I bought them online um, and we bought three of them. So I'm not, I don't need pallets anymore. So that can go. Um, sort out the compost bays. I do still need to sort that out. I've got one that's falling to bits, but it's full of um, potatoes, which I need to harvest. And the other one I'm actually going to leave in situ uh, because it's still rotting down. And until that's produced some nice compost, it might as well stay where it is. Uh, watering the leaf mould, that has been done and I've also changed slightly. I had some leaves, um, but it was only about a quarter full in the old green bin that I've drilled some holes in and I used to just use for collecting the autumn leaves into. But um, again, I'll show you that um, I've changed the plant slightly. So I'll show you those strawberry runners and I'll show you the compost bays and what I'm going to be doing. Um, and the other thing on my list is, is a long term project, and that's to um, sort out a decking or patio area. So these are my kind of in here on the go long term lists. Oops. 
I've just managed to knock a load of markers down. I'll pick those up later. Let's grab these ones. Oh, they are the wooden ones. There's a few plastic ones in there as well. Calamity Jane. Oh, fortunately, they've all landed in a box. That's fine. And then I've got a paper list. Um, so I'm not going to sit and go through all of this because I think I've waffled and talked for quite long enough. What I'd like to do um, is take you into the polytunnel and crack on. Um, one of the jobs I want to do is seaweed feed. It's time to just give some of the um, plants a good seaweed feed. Again, I'm just going to do the polytunnel today. Um, I will be feeding um, the squash and a few of the other crops um, with the seaweed feed. Um, and I've got other jobs, but they are more outdoor jobs. So I'm going to posture in the polytunnel. I want to do some harvesting. I want to do my seaweed feed. I want to show you those strawberry plants and the compost bays. And there's a few other bits. So let's get on and into the polytunnel and get things done. So here you can see the strawberry plants are looking really healthy. They've all taken, it's a couple of weeks now since I did those. And as you can see, every single one has taken. I think I actually said in the video that I made when I was doing these that I'd got 15 plants, but in fact, I clearly can't count because I've got 16 um, and I could make plenty more. Uh, but 16 plants are plenty for, for me and to give a few away. And then, as promised, before the rain comes any heavier, because it is drizzling again, um, these are those lovely new compost bays. This is the one I'm leaving. That's the remnants of the one with the potatoes in it. And then over here... Oh, gosh, the rain's really coming down. Let's get this done and then get out. Um, this green bin was just... Um, leaves uh, leaves leaves to make leaf mulch um but what i've been doing is putting into this any sort of real um perennial weeds and things that are going to really make a, an impact on the plot um so i'm putting them in here um and then obviously i can close the lid down um which is open at the moment because i want the the rainwater to go in um, and i'm trying not to put um the weeds into my compost bays so into these compost bays at the moment i've only started filling this one and it's only with things that have come off the plants that i'm growing so let's just go into the polytunnel because it really is raining um, and obviously i'm concerned about the camera so bear with me so here we are in the polytunnel and you can probably hear the rain coming down now so back to my compost heat management so although i've been growing for years I've never really mastered the art of making my own compost. And since we've been here on the farm for the last five years, I've been making much bigger efforts to create my own compost. And I did write down, I've had the two original compost bays that I made out of pallets, and I used my own beautiful, crumbly, dark, beautiful smelling compost and I used it for um, various jobs in pots and so on. But I found that it was absolutely full of weed seeds. Um, and whilst it was effective and I grew things, it was a real pain having to pull all those weed seeds out. So I'm now making a much better effort um, because I don't have a hot uh, bin, you know, a hot composting system. And I'm sure, you know, I've watched oodles of videos of some people that really do have the art of compost making i'm still i'm still not brilliant at it and it also has to be realistic for me um, because i'm sure if i put more time into it it it, it might you know turning and so on um, but i don't have that time realistically you know we're on a 10 acre small holding we have got livestock i do hold down a full-time job and then of course i'm growing add to that uh, my chronic health conditions there are some things that I simply don't have time for. Um, and, you know, it's all about balance, isn't it, and weigh, weighing it all up, you know. So if I've got an option and I can either go and ride a horse or take the dogs for a walk or go for a wild swim or come out and spend a couple of hours harvesting or sowing seeds or potting on or weeding, well, I'm going to choose that over messing about with a compost heap. 
<laughs> so I know that if I had the time, I could manage those compost heaps a whole lot better. So my solution is going to be anything that goes into these new compost bays will be just things. So, you know, leaf trimmings when, when these lovely, beautiful cucumbers that are just out of um, your vision, um, you can't quite see them. Um, but when they're finished and I pull them down, um, there's, I'm sitting here next to some um, courgettes with their great big leaves. And um, behind me here, you can see the watermelons. So I create an awful lot of foliage. When we harvest, when I process the onions, there's a lot of waste that, that comes off those onions. So everything that comes from harvesting, from growing, that's what's going into those compost bays anything that I weed, so anything I don't want growing, I am not going to be putting into those wooden compost bays. I'm actually going to put it into that green bin. Now the green bin we actually bought ourselves. When we moved here, um, there were no bins, no wheelie bins. Without a wheelie bin, the council will not collect our rubbish. And we've always had a green bin um, because sometimes I found it useful for putting those things in that I didn't want to necessarily go onto my compost heap um, and as it was you know free service collection by the well it's not free we pay for it through our council tax through the noses but that's a whole other story but you know what I mean essentially it's a service that we've got where they come and collect our recycling and our waste um, but when we came here there were no bins so I had to actually buy my own bin, own bin. so we bought um, we had to pay for the recycling tubs we had to pay for a black bin and we paid for the green bin because they came in a package and I, I think we paid somewhere in the region of a hundred pounds which is absolutely ludicrous so essentially what I'm trying to say is those bins belong to us I quickly realized that living on a 10 acre farm um, it seemed a bit silly to be putting out a green bin <laughs> for the council to come and collect now one of the reasons I chose initially to want to be involved with that is so that I could then be able and eligible to go and collect some of the municipal compost because if you're putting in then you can then go and collect that went absolutely nowhere because you can't call ahead um, or book a slot and um, you just have to turn up and whilst it isn't that far to, to travel it's still getting in the car and going somewhere and every time I turned up with my bags and my shovel to collect some municipal compost oh I'm sorry we don't have any at the moment and um, so we were getting nothing back as I say, we've got the muck heap from the horses, we've got the compost heaps here. It just didn't seem like a sensible idea um, to be using uh, a scheme that really was just more hassle than it was worth. And then they decided actually they were going to charge us extra to take our green bin. We would have to actually pay on top of our council tax um, a monthly fee to have our green waste taken away. Um, and that was really the final straw for us. Uh, why are we going to pay when we can perfectly easily dispose of green waste around the farm ourselves? So very long winded way of explaining that that green bin, I'd bought it, it belonged to us. So I've actually drilled holes around it um, and we were originally using it to make leaf mulch and leaf mould, but now I'm going to use that green bin to put all my weeds into so that once the lid is closed and it's nice and dark I can really get those rotted down and we'll get a bit more heat going and leave it for longer before I consider using it um, in the garden uh, I may have to buy another um, similar sort of bin or one of the Dalek types I might have a look on marketplace or free cycle and see what I can get hold of um, but Terry King, if you happen to be watching, I know you do watch some of my videos and I'm always super grateful. Um, you are um, the king of composting. So if you've got any ideas or tips for me, uh, please, please drop me a comment below. Um, I'm hoping that um, I'm going to crash into you at the Marvin Autumn show this year. And if you've got time, I'd love to sit and pick your brains um, and see if you've got any suggestions for me with my lifestyle and the time that I've got as to how I could... Um, create better compost. So again, going off piece a little, let's get on with some of the jobs that I want to do. So the first job I want to do today is actually get some of this um, seaweed fertilizer and water here in the polytunnel. 
so I've got a little bit of this one left over which is the Envil um, seaweed fertilizer and then I've also got some of the Verve um, which is B&Q's own brand and I absolutely love this seaweed fertilizer it's the only um, fertilizer that I use for my plants and yeah I absolutely love it the only downside is it comes in a plastic tub but you know you can always hold on to these and use them for something else once you've rinsed them out so that's the first job I want to get done today I'm actually going to take the rows off this watering can because a lot of these crops I don't want to be watering over the leaves with the seaweed fertilizer I want to be watering the soil and getting to the roots so I'm going to take that rose whoop, off So next I am going to do a little bit of harvesting. Let's see what we've got. So I'm going to have a cup of tea, but before I do that, I'm just going to show you my lovely harvest. So I've got um, some of the Romaine Heart lettuce, some tomatoes, cucumbers, one of the round courgettes, and loads more of these beautiful Rondo dwarf beans. So I'm absolutely thrilled with my little harvest. The beans, I will pop a link above to my um, video that was dedicated to the harvesting of these beans. They have been absolutely prolific. They are so delicious. And it's actually made me make the decision. Chris and I had a good chat about it. He really loves these beans and I'm really enjoying them too. 
there are dwarf variety i only put four or five plants into that bed they were obviously grown from seed and they've just been phenomenal so going forward i think we're actually going to bum bum ba stop growing peas because i don't have a huge amount of luck with peas i've never been particularly successful with them but i really like them but what I find is, unless you're prepared to dedicate an awful lot of space to them, and even then, there is an awful lot of growing. You've got a lot of foliage and waste. Then you've got to go through the whole process of picking, which I love, but the shelling to get quite a small harvest from a plant. So you need an awful lot of space and an awful lot of plants to get yourselves a reasonable harvest. And I've drawn the conclusion that I am never going to be self-sufficient in peas. But these beans have just been phenomenal. So going forward, I am going to have one more bash at peas next year because I have bought a specific variety um, that I wanted to try. And I've got some seeds, so I might as well use them up. But over the years, I don't think I'm going to buy any more peas to um, grow. And I think what we're going to do is, is grow more of this particular variety of bean, which, as I say, is the dwarf variety Rondo. And this year I grew them in the polytunnel. But next year I may do some in the polytunnel just because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But my plan for next season is so we're coming to the tail end of August now. It won't be long before I'm thinking about putting my onion sets in. I will overwinter my onions in one of the beds. And I think I'm going to move them into bed number one this year. And then as soon as I lift my onions, I'm going to get my dwarf variety of Rondo bean into that bed. So I'm going to start them in the polytunnel in pots. And then when I lift my onions, I'm going to fill that bed with these beans. And I may even dedicate certainly half, if not a whole bed, just to this variety of beans because I've loved them so much. So I'm going to kick back now with my cup of tea and just chill for a while before I move on to my next jobs. But I'm going to end this video here because I'm aware that otherwise it's going to be quite long. One of the next jobs I'm going to think about doing is sorting through my seeds so that I can start sowing what I want to be sowing and growing over the coming months. So end of summer into autumn and also thinking about what I might be growing over the winter months. So there will be a video coming out in the future showing you what I'll be sowing and growing over the coming months. And as I say, what I'll be sowing through the autumn and winter months. So keep watching if you'd like to see that video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. To my old subscribers and new, if you haven't already subscribed, please do consider doing that and hit that bell so you get notifications of all my latest videos. Take care and I'll see you all again soon.